Hello and welcome again to Critical Hit Wargaming Speed Painting Guide. I said last week that when the new skeletons came out for Soulblight Grave Lords, that I would do another tutorial on how to speed paint them up as quickly as possible. So that's what I've done here. If you like me and you had a Legions and a Gash army that uh, has now been replaced by Soulblight Grave Lords, you've no doubt bought the new skeleton. So I'm going to show you how to paint them up to look like this, which is a nice, quick, but decent looking ancient armor type scheme. Uh, that's going to get them on the table really quickly, looking at about 15 minutes per model average, which is uh, it's pretty quick when it comes to painting. So let's get started. Step one is to undercoat the model black, and then we're going to go straight in with some dry brushing on the cloth areas. Here I'm using Eschen Grey, and that's going to create a nice base layer for us to do a second round of highlights in a moment. So just go around the entire model, being careful not to let it wobble too much on the top half, because it's some delicate joints holding it all together. Once you've done that, it's going to look something like this. It's just a subtle highlight over all of the raised areas. Uh, and then we can add a second layer now, which is going to be with Dawnstone in this case. That's worth noting you can use uh, other types of grey if you want to. You can use Storm Vermin Fur and things like that to create a dingier look. Or if you want to, you can just paint the entire cloth with... Uh, the colour scheme that matches your army. So you could do it purple, you could do it red, and that's going to add a little bit extra time, but it would be in keeping with the theme of your army. So I'm just going around there and catching all of the most raised areas with uh, with that Dawnstone. Once you finish the Dawnstone dry brush, it's going to look something like this, and then we're going to go straight in with painting all of the metallic areas. We're going to go for one colour to do all of this, and that is with Iron Warriors, which is a really dark metal. Uh, we're going to paint all of the armour with this, so make sure you get all of the armour on the feet, so the greaves, the shield, the helmet, any chainmail, and any blades, like the swords or tips of spears. And there's the dark metal done. There's not actually a huge amount of the model left to do. So uh, I wasn't lying when I said it's a pretty quick scheme. Next up, we're going to switch to a contrast paint and we're going to use Wildwood to paint all over the metallic areas. Now you could use Agbrax Earthshade if you don't have Wildwood, but it won't quite achieve the same ancient armor looking effect. So just get it all over the model here. You can, if you really wanted to, use a different colour. So you could use red or you could use purple, uh, either of the, the red variants. I'd probably suggest Flesh Tear is red if you're going to use it. Uh, and that will create a coloured armour if that's what you want to do. But here we're creating an ancient iron looking uh, effect. So we're going to use Wildwood. And that's what it looks like when it's dry. As you can see, it really brings down the shininess of the armour. And next we're going to bring it back up a little bit to make it look metallic again as opposed to uh, this dank kind of colour. And to do that we're going to use Iron Hand Steel um, with a really light dry brush over the raised areas in the detail. And that's going to make it look nice and metallic again. And with that done, the model is really starting to come together now. There's not many steps left. It's mainly just painting the bone and the straps, and we're pretty much done. So that's what we're going to go on to do now. So here I'm just using Dryad Bark to paint in all of the leather straps on the model. That's like the cross straps on his back and his belt running around to his front. And that's the leather all done. It's a pretty quick step. Next up, uh, we'll be painting all of the bone, and to do that we're going to use Morgast Bone, which is actually a base paint, but it doesn't go on particularly well over black. Uh, so once you've done a, a first layer, you may have to just go around your batch again, because obviously you'll be painting these in a gigantic batch of skeletons, hopefully 20, maybe more if you're unlucky. Uh, just go around again and make sure that um, all of that bone is a nice solid colour. It's worth bearing in mind that you may prefer actually to paint the bone first and then the leather straps afterwards. It really doesn't matter. Um, I just did it this way around because I was fairly confident I could paint around the straps with my bone colour. And that's what it looks like when it's all done. So we're really, really near the end now. It's just a case of putting some Agrax Earthshade on all those leather straps and on all of that bone and we're pretty much there.
And there it is, that's it, we are done. That is the model finished. All you need to do is base it to match the rest of your army and uh, that's your death rattle skeleton done. To get through your entire unit, it'll probably take you three or so hours, but to paint 20 models, that is uh, really, really quick. Obviously, you're gonna get faster and faster as you go through painting them. I've tried to be pretty neat on this one, but you don't have to be. Here is another one I've painted. Um, this I've decided to use the basing technique that I used in the other video on the first death rattle skeleton, so go and check that out if you wanna know how to do it. But in short, Astra Granite, with uh, Dragonoff Nightshade over the top and then dry brushed a light grey, in this case long beard grey. But it's a really good effect and you get some really good skeletons out the end of it that are perfectly good to go on the table. And here they are in a darker, more sinister photo, all complete. As you can see, they look perfectly good enough to get on the table and uh, make people believe that you spent a lot more time on them than you actually did. As always, if this video was helpful, please do chuck a like, chuck a subscribe and uh, Chuck a comment below if you want me to cover anything in particular to paint really, really quickly. Uh, if you want more detailed guides, there's definitely other channels out there that are going to cover that a lot better than I do. Um, my aim is to get all of those fields of grey into fields of actual painted coloured models because that always looks much better. Thanks for watching.